ओके इज इट लाइव स्ट्रीम्ड नो वेल इट्स इज इट इज लाइव स्ट्रीम ओके वी आर गुड गुड इवनिंग फ्रॉम बे एरिया पैसिफिक स्टैंडर्ड टाइम एंड गुड मॉर्निंग टू इंडियन ऑडियंस दिस इज अशोक फ्रॉम लेफ्ट एंड राइट is hari devnath is a standard introduction like that <laughs> so we are happy to be back with episode 6 of season 2 of casual conversations with carnatic cohorts id classical uh, arts cohorts ne vechunnala ena apdi dhan poi irukke nariye per ana today we have an important personality uh, um, a very very talented lady uh, multifaceted personality இந்த மல்டி ஃபேஸட் பர்சனாலிட்டி சொல்லும்போது அது கரெக்டாக முழுமையான இது மீனிங் வரதில்ல அதாவது ஆளுமைன்றதுக்கு அற்புதமான வார்த்தை இங்கிலீஷில் கிடையாது அதுதான் அதனால் வந்து நம்முடைய சுமாரா சுதாரா சுமாரா மல்டி ஃபேஸட் பர்சனாலிட்டி சொல்லிடுறோம் ஷீ இஸ் தட் இஸ் அ மச் லெஸ் தன் டைட்டில் ஃபார் வாட் ஷீ இஸ் ஷீ இஸ் அ வெரி யூனிக் காம்பினேஷன் ஆஃப் வோக்கல் மியூசிஷியன் மியூசிகாலஜிஸ்ட் டீச்சர் ஜேர்னலிஸ்ட் மியூசிக் எஜுகேட்டர் அண்ட் கல்ச்சுரல் ஆர்கனைசர்ஸ் ஆர்கனைசர் அண்ட் மச் மோர் தன் வாட் Uh, i can probably say in about 3 minutes of intro she is a disciple of uh, late padma bhushan sri ps narayana sami and has performed many concerts all over india and abroad uh, and um, i mean you will hear a lot from her nane mottadi opichidana appra the program is not going to be interesting that uh, in the program to know me to know the artist from her or his, his own mouth right and uh, today i heartily welcome along with my co-host uh, hari shrimati radha ji uh, radha ji na kupdu naga sadharana and romba mariyadaya kupdu to the program and welcome to our show we are very very happy and privileged to have you on our show and uh, next one hour let's all enjoy the conversations hari and with these few words i'll pass on the baton to hari Hi. absolutely absolutely yeah, no, it's a pleasure uh, radha ji thank you so much for joining us today uh, it's a it's a phenomenal opportunity for me to resync with you and uh, and and talk to you uh, of course um, uh, you may not uh, remember in my uh, high school days you and uh, baskar anna were a huge uh, uh, influence uh, inspiration for uh, students like me students of music like me and um, you know i've always uh, Uh, looked out and learned uh, a lot from what you and uh, Bhaskar and I do, and uh, I'm I'm also following a lot of your uh, online uh, uh, combination of education infotainment as as we can best put it, but uh, even that is a short sell. So um, what we try to do in this program, Radha Ji, is uh, to sort of give our our uh, um, audience a little bit of a different. perspective from what they can find from your resume for instance what we would really like to do is get a personable um, a purview of uh, you your experiences and uh, you know what wh- what music means to you and uh, you know in in general what what where you want to spend your time where you enjoy spending your time you know this is kind of the the things we want to probe into uh, in fact a short life sketch of uh, what is great be great what so maybe we can start with something very you know very open ended ninga epo epdi irukum poru ellu irukum polam unga manodharmam unga unga manodharmam correct so the uh, for, for as an opening question i kind of want to ask you about your childhood how you, your foray into carnatic music and uh, you know what your childhood uh, was like uh, take us back to that day or those days ipo vandu you should look on the side paatha than flashback pogum மேல பாத்தீங்க மனசாட்சி வரும் அந்த மாதிரி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் थैंक यू டு both of you for this wonderful opportunity to share something about myself i'm not anything very great or anything but uh, i thank you for this nice words first of all uh, uh, first thing of course uh, i would like to share that uh, uh, people must be thinking that oh she belongs to a great musical family and all that Uh, i don't belong to any music family at all and nobody in my family actually has got much to do with music so it's only the divine grace i would say that i have been put into this path of music of course my better half came and uh, came into my life at the very right time and uh, from then and on it has been really a splendid journey i would say because of the fact both of you know mr mudra baskar and uh, 
he literally breathes music all the time and sometimes it's really very <laughs> you know stressful also because he's all the time talking about music <laughs> oh, overbearing <laughs> to put it mildly it. i mean one way it is a blessing one way i would say sometimes it's really very taxing in the sense that from right from the time he brushes his teeth and comes down for a cup of coffee he starts all about music so and uh, he doesn't even realize sometimes that cooking requires concentration and he keeps on and on sitting at the dining <laughs> <laughs> he thinks that cooking is a mechanical job but then uh, I mean, and that's how you know we interact it's very interesting but life is very interesting that way so looking back at my own uh, journey uh, i told once before also like many people are endowed with a great music family and all and after that you know once they get married <laughs> things don't fall in place for them they have their priorities in terms of the family or the children and they have to give up but for me it's been vice versa where i really didn't have a great background and absolutely no clue about what music was in fact when i was uh, small because uh, my parents did a not appreciate music but nothing more than that so uh, whatever i sang was like great for them you know that was the kind of uh, thing now if i look back i really feel so you know like what was i singing and uh, but then uh, i was born and brought up in calcutta so there things were also you know like even little bit you do it was like a great thing and everybody at that time you know uh, to be very honest whenever i used to go to a competition people will say ra 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 they will they used to call me radha so radha and that so that means all the prizes will be backed by her and they used to feel so you know kind of jittery and nervous but once i came to madras uh, for my higher studies i realized what a big hollow thing i was and there was so much more to do and i was actually nothing that was the truth so from where i really thought it was something really great to i came to know that i was a zero i had to start from the scratch so that is again a great learning experience for me actually so the background goes that i was in calcutta and then after that after i finished by plus 2 but then this you know that inner uh, desire uh, passion for music has always been there so when we were small we used to go for kacheris there is an rr sabha there so all the great stalwarts used to come there so that kind of an inspiration that one day we have to become like this or maybe at least uh, go to the coming to madras itself was like Going to US for me at that time, point of time, you know, like how people aspire today. Because uh, coming from there, and uh, my parents are quite apprehensive about how I'm going to manage it all. I was staying in the hostel and uh, studying it all. So that way, from childhood, after that, of course, uh, extremely lucky I would say uh, to have Mr. Mudra Baskar as my husband. Because after I, when I got my, I was doing my graduation itself. I got married at the age of twenty, <laughs> second year. So there's, but there's like everything flowed so smoothly for me. I finished my graduation, then post graduation, then I got my UGC fellowship uh, grant for uh, doing my research, and uh, probably the only one in my batch who could continue without a break. See, yeah. after post graduation, many had to take a break, and some got married, and or some had to pursue something else and come back to research. But for me, it was a seamlessly continuous kind of uh, thing. So that way, it was very great. of course uh, the last stages of my research was indeed a nightmare in the sense that when i was about to submit i conceived and uh, my son was to be born so that phase a uh, people why i'm sharing all this is because it's not a smooth ride you know life is not a smooth ride and uh, yeah. behind all that uh, what you see in front behind it there is so much happening so when my uh, absolutely final stage of submission and uh, i was actually totally is to confine to bed because of certain complications with my uh, delivery and other things and there also i think i should acknowledge my uh, beloved for that because you won't believe he used to go to work in the morning and uh, at that time we didn't have this sort of kind of sophisticated computers and all for typing so it was in a very fundamental stage i'm talking about 23 years back 24 years back so he used to come back home and take care of the child and when i used to do the typing or then i would take care of the child he would help me with the typing of the Uh, research work and all that. So it has been like you know, he's been a part and parcel of my total growth. I would say in that sense. So why I'm sharing this is that doing a research or anything for that everything does doesn't fall in place. Then he won't believe me. In fact, I, I had to take one year complete break before I had to get back to my research. So when I went back to see whatever I had written some three four years back, I was wondering whether I had written or somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> It's totally lost actually. I was wondering where do I start from because one year is really a very long break, and right. I really didn't have much help at home also. So we were like taking care of the child, and he had to take care of his business, which was also a very crucial stage. 
so life is all about a, like you know roller roller coaster ride and i suppose we have to keep going on and on tell us uh, tell us a little bit rada ji about your uh, how you <laughs> saw uh, um uh, shri uh, narayan swami uh, guru narayan swami how uh, psn saroda ungaloda interaction when you met him how old were you at the time what was any interesting episodes there uh well uh, first uh, guru after coming to my first guru in calcutta was shrimati jaya shankar and uh, after i came to uh, chennai i joined my ba at that time i was actually learning from guru vairamangalam shri lakshmi narayan oh. and uh, excellent uh, guru i am really blessed oh. uh, not many people know about him but he is yes, one yes. of the genius and a wonderful teacher he was working at kalakshetra and kalapita so after his demise actually i was just wondering uh, uh, what to do and at that time only i got to uh, come under the guidance of uh, sagita acharya shri ps narayan so and uh, that way i think uh, i have never felt that vacuum of not being in a musical family because of the kind of uh, love affection and knowledge that he shared through i mean he's an amazing uh, teacher everybody in the world who has come under his guidance will know about what he is first thing of course uh, one person who never had a clock in the uh, music room so we never even know how long we were singing you know till the song was complete if you just keep singing and singing and singing so that was the kind of a person and uh, total no inhibitions at all you know that uh, before i went to see him i used to think oh, what a famous person and all that you know you have in your mind but the kind of simple and down to earth person that he was he got many things you know apart from music to me in terms of uh, life lessons i would say in terms of how you can be down to earth in spite of being so knowledgeable still i can't comprehend him because uh, every time i used to go to class you know i used to be a bit late because of my household work everything i used to finish and then rush to the class he'll be sitting there you know there's one uh, portico well i think in front of his house he'll be sitting there waiting for the student to come so these kind of things you know really humble you when you and uh, i think for me also now as a teacher when i look back at what he stood for i mm. learned many things from him you know that uh, always very very down to earth very very simple and uh, the most important thing of course i learned from him is uh, how to teach different levels of students so uh-huh. i was um, to be very honest i was very in a fundamental level compared to many of the senior students who could just grasp at a jiffy so even for that painstaking efforts i would say repeatedly that see a teaching on sangathi again and again and again till you got it so many kinds of uh, wonderful lessons i have learned from him of course uh, the compositions that he taught me are a treasure and i still really uh-huh. uh, uh, hold them very close to my heart so in in terms of uh, the learning years with uh, sri psn uh, were there any interesting uh, anecdotes uh, during the course of learning the uh, learning a particular kriti that you 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 i mean you, you had some difficulty or you had to do a few things uh, there, there was never an instance of scolding you <laughs> i i'm asking you a question in round about me <laughs> that that is another thing i learned from him as to how to be patient with even a dumb student <laughs> so <laughs> I, i was dumb i was not really very very smart at that time no no I, that, that... notation and other things i mean he was so so good at notation all of you know how he used mm. to notate all yeah. songs and other things so everything i was in a very preliminary state incarnation of patience so i think that is one thing yeah, and uh, at this stage i would also like to uh, share about another uh, guru in my institution who was in the same uh at par i would say shrimati sukta vardachari uh, was doing my uh, post graduation another incarnation of uh, patience knowledge humility everything whatever you may say because another person who taught me that uh, institutions you know are very very difficult to handle because you have the most fundamental and most ignorant people also coming in and the most knowledgeable coming in all together so yeah. balancing everybody together is a herculean task i will tell you from ba <laughs> level in that way because actually my classmates were anuradha shriram and the like of that stage mm. and there were also people who were just starting with sapasa so you can imagine the kind of uh, stress <laughs> those type of people had and but people, yes, people that, people that yes, are should be challenged yeah and got them challenged <laughs> I mean, it may be very comical for you to hear, but that was the truth. When I did my uh, um, graduation, I was staying in the hostel, 
so i had two students from the music department at my own classmates uh, roommates rather till the second year they were not able to get the tha ihan right so after that they got so frustrated and left the uh, course and they went off so you can imagine that the imagine right of the teacher at that time you know to have right. such thing so coming back to sugna vadha cherry madam and of course another uh, important person who really taught me is dr rs jalakshmi both of them you know see sir when you you come across so many teachers in your life yeah. some of them are very close to your heart and they get embedded like so these people you know they were real uh, incarnations of how uh, to make music simple how to break it up into a simple way to communicate it to the student that yeah. also is something because some people you know they in fact uh, there are also examples which i don't want to quote but some professors you know make it sound so profound and so they you know yeah. high pedestal that uh, it makes you almost run away from the subject so got <laughs> my comprehension and then uh, you just leave it i and these two people were people, you know the kind of uh, um, lecturers who really made you understand that anything could be made so simple and easy yeah. and communicated in fact they taught us very very big kritis now if i look back at all of them they're all very mm. really a lot of you know it's a very heavy syllabus and again they would keep on and on and on and on teaching you know tirelessly till you got it right and they would even spend hours after the class for those weak students to come up you know so they, i mean right. the whole idea was that nobody should feel left behind uh-huh. so it's not like that uh, they are at a high level are not able to come to that at least to a basic decent level the student has to be brought and they strive so hard so these are all kind of people you know who really motivate probably, probably all that has seeped into me and today it's something says that you teach very well in fact all my um, programs that uh, you we want to talk about everywhere people say that uh, i don't know anything about music but i understand what you're saying yeah. <laughs> so, so that is the kind of thing i feel where i'm successful where i don't want to make it look like on big uh, unreachable uh, thing <coughs> something which is uh, very easy for us to comprehend that's beautiful that's the yeah, amama that is the insignia of a great teacher they are breaking it down and being able to communicate uh, what what the complexity is there yeah i have yeah, an audacious you have the clarity um, you communicate well if you know nariya pesanum you know nariya pesanum ungalde i have a few more things to uh, you know ask you to talk about but can i make an audacious request to uh, sing something uh, that you I have you have feel better go into talking as there is enough of singing <laughs> ரசிகாட்டி குருஸ் uh parampara uh, and the and the tutelage that you have gone through given all this uh, when did your uh, the interest to do the type of uh, music seva that you are doing right now when did that start and how did it start see again uh, sometimes adverse situations make you what you are uh, these are all there <laughs> because uh, people always think that whatever you are doing is something which is like you know it's just fallen into your platter it's not like that Uh, uh, my ambition actually was to become a great musicologist but uh, very sadly i would say that in india we don't have much scope for that area at all because people don't even recognize a musicologist and uh, luckily i'm able to sing well so I, as a musicologist i gained respect mm-hmm. but otherwise as a music or musicologist we keep talking and talking and talking and can't sing they don't even respect you that is the truth then i blow pressure up oh evlo pressure wala paada theriyuma that pressure up So that is the dream just a request how would you explain musicology to a student of music just some of my students also ask me and uh, i i have uh, not ventured into trying to answer their question i've requested them to come to your program instead ningal <laughs> cholungo again nothing uh, i don't want to make it sound very profound or anything musicology is nothing but the study of music allied to practicals whatever practical aspects are there studying it in the theory form is uh, musicology and of course there are different levels you may do it as a historical perspective or a practical oriented thing so there are different areas so it's only about the study of musicology but uh, i understand that in us or in all you have a, a very great respect for that musicology as such but here i mean more than the respect there is actually no future i would say 
because uh, very sadly even uh, i've been seeing like you know when you write for a journal you are asked to do it as a free service nobody pays you here correct, correct. so it's a very i mean very sad state of affairs where uh, musicology is a great subject and it's very important for music for uh, understanding the growth of music and everything but so all my ideas of uh, becoming a great musicologist is crushed oh. so there again um uh, because i mean after all at the end of the day it should translate into some money also so Correct. it can't be a service okay. so, so not even on translate into money even the journals which are there in india are very very few for music which are mm. respectable journals i would say which really recognize your uh, uh, whatever work you do so that way it was a very depressing state you know where you imagine something for yourself and then it doesn't happen again here uh, my better half came into my life in terms of see that's where you know the partnership really gets a lot of uh, meaning where he was telling me you have done so much you have studied so much i mean i did it with a lot of passion let me say that uh, I, when i did it i really did not expect that i'll make a living off of anything but mm. definitely i thought that the musicology of the work could be recognized so then you are saying that you have done so much so much of research so much of hard work has gone and everything seems to be like it's going to be sitting in the library for dust to gain on it so <laughs> dust <laughs> <and> maybe so <laughs> <laughs> you know nobody even takes back that research work and reads unless they have a, uh, they are doing phd and they need my support or <laughs> or, or uh, you know some kind of uh, reference point reference. that's how, so then at that time only what happened luckily during my research uh, work actually it is a practical subject i took of uh, carnatic music concerts and analytical study so i had a lot of opportunity to go around to live concerts in fact i have learned yeah. that period about more than 750 concerts every day it was a ritual because that mm. was part of like i'll just go to one sabha sit there x or y or popular artist or young artist doesn't matter i have to sit and uh, sit and you know kind of observe what they do so that that time i got an opportunity to uh, work for indian express as their music critic that was a mm. wonderful opening for me almost 7 8 years i did their music column under the name barani again mm. here i didn't want to use my name because of the fact that you know people are so critical you will cannot tell you either the guy adhe so no that yeah. <laughs> so radha baskar went out of the scene and it was barani nobody even knew that i was uh, i was the one writing so for many years so this is how it has to work okay then after that uh, that got over then my mudra baskar was telling why don't you start a magazine so that is how samudra came into yeah. being about 17 years back he started this magazine just for the fact that Uh, whatever i had acquired the small knowledge one joy of sharing it with people the musicology or the other research work which i did or the experiences that i had gained it was one way to at least keep myself satisfied and engaged and i didn't have to work for anybody i was doing the work for myself yeah. all my life has been a blessing where i have in fact institutions to be very honest i have got one some of the offers for the highest posts in some institutions recently also it was a very very prestigious post but somehow i felt that Uh, even if my path is a very small one, I will take that path only. I don't want to, like you know, I always remember uh, S.P. Shekhar's dialogue that I would rather be the face of a cat than the tail of a lion. Well said, well said. I remember that I got told that. And I can't even think of falling for this. So I know I really don't want to be under somebody. So and by God's grace, till now. i've been able to pay my own part so idu mari nariya vishayangal appra vandu digital vandha appra basket basket is a totally digital savvy person so like na work 10 years ago they were just or another vishayam and mari or character and you would have seen through his work yeah, also yeah, how so he so many things people said that this is not possible but he did it 5 years back and his conviction is just uh, absolutely amazing sometimes yeah. and i am the person the host will first say no to everything you know, whatever he does says i will say no first i think that's not only as a good partner as a good wife too correct full touch me needa no solve why he will say so. <laughs> <laughs> but then after that then you know we start working on that whatever he has said and then it evolves so good way that uh, sense of conviction also that um, my work actually samudra and other things didn't pay anything as such mm. but then it was pure la- labor of love i would say I gained a lot of experience in that, and that has helped. Are so you still, that yes, uh, the research. Part, are you still doing it, or has it been discontinued? 
now because of the pandemic we had to discontinue because yeah. uh, printing and other things were posing a great problem and of course uh, sadly today reading habits uh, of books has dwindled like anything even newspaper many have stopped uh, buying it so that how it will uh, here so we moved to the digital media now i have uploaded a facebook called samudra fine arts magazine so now we are trying to convert everything uh, we are shortly we doing all the interviews that you have done or uh, what we are whatever you do we want to go on a digital mode so that we can reach a larger uh, spectrum of audience Lovely. so in in your interactions with musicians how many musicians are really interested in uh, uh-huh. the subject musicology and are willing to contribute in terms of you know um, uh, some kind of research work that they have done i mean a lot of people think differently at, at least senior musicians that have been in music field practice in practicing musicians uh, are they willing to share that information and have they done approach to your talk see this is again as i said two things uh, hari first thing is of course uh, a small magazine cannot pay much mm. it's uh, just like mm. some kind of a token uh, uh, you can pay that much only you can do because my income itself is very this is the true of any art magazine in india of course so, yeah because we don't have any uh, government funding or anything like that so whatever mm. uh, we are getting through our subscription from our um, readers that is how it runs so t- obviously i don't expect uh, very big musicians to uh, spend their time Mm. so much of time in writing an article and of course the readership is also not very vast for art magazines you know it's not like a film magazine where you have uh, thousands or lakhs of readers so i don't really even blame them for that because of the fact that we can't compensate them monetary and mm. with the mm. other people it's been a very uh, you'll be very i mean kind of uh, interested to know that how many researchers you know i have genuinely said that at least make an effort to publish your article through my journal or something that will give you some visibility that mm. uh, research is also in a very bad state in mm. india so they think rather they let the, the research work stay within the confines of the four walls and not get out so oh. <laughs> that's the kind of thing you know so and some people are very lazy to write i don't know why they, they find it a great effort to write they nalik kare nalik kare and that nalik never comes so that how you know it happens so i mean most uh, very sad also i mean may seem a very stark truth but beyond doing that phd many people are not even interested to take it further anyway that's the sad phd is only for a doctorate degree so once a doctor gets attached to the name they feel that everything is over but my guide used to say that research is the beginning of your phd is the research, beginning of your research rather he would always keep on telling that but people think that is the end point and they just uh, close the book and that's the end of it it is a hanging hope there's not much hope so probably that's the motivating factor is lacking where you know and that impetus is always necessary you know where that yeah. when you say, when you have a large conference or a big seminar yeah. where you're going to present a paper then you feel motivated to you know really pursue your research mm. work for that probably it's very sadly that's lacking so i suppose uh, i think you are perfectly poised to really Uh, so the seat for that kind of an activity because you are involved with uh, ugc uh, and uh, a few government institutions now uh, why can't why can't you make a proposal and get that started because uh, if you don't do it it's like you know, who's going to build the cat <laughs> it's a, it's a very very difficult thing that's why i said i uh, in one word i'd rather stick to being to myself <laughs> because don't that is very difficult i mean very sadly again uh, arts don't find a very great uh, patronage with yes. uh, mm. or anything you know it's just there as another you know add on that's how it is so it's very difficult and um, in the such a big organization to get things uh, done yes. you are just a, not even a small drop just you are there as one person that's all right. but, uh, beyond that you cannot do anything so on the flip side so you talked about uh, Uh, musicians and their reluctance to share more because you know the the compensation is not very freely flowing yes. totally understood that so on the other side when you when you do publish and talk uh, freely about uh, musicology what are questions or what are topic areas that uh, you often uh, get as a musicologist uh, why, where is people's interest when it comes to topics around musicology mainly of course uh, practical related so it will be like some composer or raga or something like that uh, but then i have been uh, uh, very fortunate i would say because people always bring in some you know uh, never heard topics to me because they say that only you can do it 
And I take it a challenge. I mean, it's really nice rather than doing the cliche kind of work, you know, always talking about Kya Kare Jare Diksha there. So many kinds of new, new topics, which I myself have never explored, have come to me and I've taken it up as a challenge and uh, done a lot of work. So any that's any very, examples? Uh, aesthetics. Yes. Aesthetics yes. of uh, Karnatic music. Nobody has even thought about it. Always we talk about this as divine. Correct. And we talk about bhakti. So what is the aesthetic element? Or the art element in music. These are things which have been very undermined, very sadly. Because, right. uh, and uh, Ashokji knows about that. In fact, uh, I talked about it in his program also right. about how uh, we always look at the composers as only divine. But then how much they've contributed towards the art of music is something monumental. And uh, because of the divinity being uh, exploded to such a high level, we mm. forget that uh, art content that they have contributed. It's not for the Dikshadar or uh, Shama Sastri or Tyagaraja. We won't even have this kind of a structure that we are talking so proudly about today. Yeah. So, uh, and I strongly believe that just by having bhakti, you cannot uh, bring forth such uh, great uh, work. You mm. need to have that artistry in you. Of course, that is divine grace is there. That is, I if you ask me to compose like this, I can't do that is for sure. Uh, <laughs> but then, the, I mean, the, when you go back to history, you see they have really worked for so many years in terms of imbibing so much of knowledge from various granthas and other things. Not that one fine morning they got up and they got inspired and they burst into song. And if you look at the whole, even the, uh, what you call that is a work of one person, it is so organized in, in the sense that if Yagaraja was only about bhakti, why would he compose 30 songs in Todi? You want right. to give such dimensions to Todi or he has composed so many in Shankara Bhannam. In fact, Atana, so many are there. Yes. So everything with, with the purpose of the art in mind also. Otherwise, oh. uh, earlier than that, we see Badra Chala Randa, so many others. All the charanas will be verbatim in the same tune. So the purpose for, was bhakti where only the sahitya was important. So these kind of uh, many, many such topics, you know, where uh, very challenging topics have come. And I'm very happy to work with that. So for me, it is, uh, but of course, my favorite are the Mumur Tigal because any amount of talking about them, I feel it's uh, absolutely, uh, uh -huh. we are reaching to nowhere. That's the kind of, uh, because uh, absolutely, you know, the, in fact, we are gifted. I would say that uh, we've been uh, that's uh, being passed on such a great pressure, and uh, sharing that uh, uh, beauty of all their composition has been one of my greatest uh, happiness. So, in terms of uh, uh, this divinity component being blown out of proportion, uh, even though it is it is an, it's an integral part of it, uh, have they ignored the creative and technical side of things to to kindle the interest in uh, aspiring people, you know, see any subject has to be interesting enough for people to large, large amount of people to take and explore. Uh, and I, th th that also brings the question, how much of that divinity component is really valued by the practicing musicians of today? I can understand the musicians uh, before, I mean, I, at least, you know, from, from the way we all grew up, but how much of it is really valued in today's uh, music world. Well, uh, well if, 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 if you don't want to answer that question, also fine. But well, I have, I have, to have no question. Problem. I have absolutely no problem with that <laughs> because, as I said, I have uh, uh, my own views. I'd like to share about that. Divinity hmm. is again is a very personal question because uh, I always uh, strongly believe that how much ever I am divine or uh, bhakti oriented, I can never think in the thought process of Tyagaraja or Deshaja. Hmm. Mm. Because they are a class apart. So I can just only probably take those compositions and sing. We sang Nidhi Chala Sukama. There was something from inner which came. Today, I can't even say Nidhi Chala Sukama because of the fact that I need money. So, <laughs> so where is my bhakti? <laughs> where is my remuneration? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is a practical. So his thought process was totally different in terms of how he looked at Rama or what his bhakti quotient was. So probably even one drop from that, if you could emulate, fine, okay. So I, I so that aspect, I still feel that uh, that kind of bhakti. So for me, bhakti is nothing but being devoted to music. That to be very honest, to be mm. true to your music, to be yeah. honest to your music. So any musician, practical musician, who's very honest to his music and practices it with values, I think he is the one who has bhakti. And today, of course, we have come a long way. You can uh, definitely see how musicians are so intelligent today in terms of uh, working out so many new formats, 
you know new uh, even the mathematical elements so many things uh, and uh, discovering new ragas exploring new ragas exploring new compositions it has come a very long way in terms of so many avenues being thrown open to so that way i think more than the bhakti now they have looked at uh, looking at music as a real art form and trying to explore that aspect of it and that's why i think it's becoming so beautiful also because of the fact that everybody is trying to explore it in their own way why you take one uh, tilana of lalguri the kind of workmanship that has gone into his uh, tilana that is the artwork so now mm. right take that and play it then i'm trying to look at the art point only so that there i don't think there is any bhakti except the bhakti that i should be true to lalguri jayaraman in terms of presenting the composition properly that Correct. is the bhakti so people may differ from me in this view and say that i'm being a rebel but i don't uh, mind about that because i'm very strongly i have the conviction oh. that bhakti is all about being true to your art see every original thinker has been thought of as a rebel or somebody original right so that happens always there are uh, 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 people take sides that's okay i mean that's that's the way of the world okay uh, in in terms of yeah, just uh, like add on you find it very weird in fact i spoke about it in one of my episode also i don't know if you noticed it yes. where somebody said that you are every day talking about music you are not uh, being true to god and one person was supporting my ventures he just stopped totally because of the fact that he felt that i was not having bhakti enough bhakti <laughs> So you can imagine how people think. Yes. <laughs> the different people think. They think that. But I very strongly feel that without a rasika, he says that you are catering to rasikas, and so I am not for you. <laughs> and he stopped totally communicating. You, you know what? <laughs> I think uh, it's better to ignore such persons because what you are doing in CM three sixty five, I find is uh, a, a work of passion and a work of dedication. Okay. and tirelessness basically if you do the same thing uh, every day right you you people get tired but you do it with so much of energy because i've been listening to every one of them you cross 150 first of all claps for that and uh, that, that that kind of journey is not easy for anybody to undertake and do it so eloquently consistently nicely and you're doing it so well and uh, i think it's better to ignore the all that We all say in Tamil, yeah, that so you see, you're doing like that. And the very, ah, that, that, and the as uh, the uh, to to answer your the previous question, the the bhakti is shown there, right? The devotion to the art form, devotion to what you really committed to do is definitely seen. So it's better to ignore such uh, negative comments. I'm not at all affected by anything. That also you know, it make me stop my work. In fact, Correct. that is made it more vigorous. You know, I feel that I should do it all the more. So that's <laughs> not the point. I'm just trying to say how people think differently about the same thing. Even the how I think or somebody else thinks, there's a difference in the way. But nevertheless, each one has a, a has a right to his own thinking. So we have nothing to do about it. But uh, coming to this point of CM three sixty five, again the same point. I would like to say that I wanted to demystify music. That was the first idea. That's that it. is. Uh, they are not they making the people think that it's only for elite class and only some people need to know about it mm. so that was i i must make a mention of that here because that is indeed a challenge i would say because uh, being a musicologist to coming down to a very fundamental level of explanation is a lot of uh, uh, thinking and hard work actually Correct. because you need to break it down and uh, just here also i would like to share that uh, since mr ashok was saying Uh, every day you know like when i am going to the walking or uh, just sitting always i am thinking what next what next what next what is the topic that awesome. and i specifically you must have seen that i don't connect one day's topic to the next because i don't want you to lose the concept of connectivity it should be just that one day you listen for 5 minutes and that's it i think so, so that i uh, well, i thought probably you would have written all the 360 topics Uh, to talk about in some kind of uh, a note kind of a thing and you talk about this it's so uh, surprising to think that you are thinking uh, as you are walking every day <laughs> yeah so because to talk about 365 is too much to really jordan and i am like you know i look at observe at uh, day to day things also so suddenly something happens and then uh, somebody i just have in a conversation with somebody so something mm. which they talk triggers my thought process so i thought let me discuss about that so like that you would seen that right. not only technical aspects but day to day happenings as an organizer as a researcher as a musician some things also are being the way you must have seen like about the rasika i have shared once i shared about the uh, this thing what is that branding how branding works in music 
So this I know you seeing the Facebook, I'm seeing how people are uh, trying to really, you know, keep the, themselves in the limelight through the social media. It has really changed. You must have seen over the past two years how. Uh, yeah, what what, what I'm past... observing is Radha as a person who is not only conversant uh, with what she has in the right, she she's able to express it so well. At the mm -hmm. same time, she is observing a lot of things around her. So, uh, which is not, if you are so consumed in things, you, you forget to observe what is happening. Yeah, really, uh, very aptly named 365. Uh, and it's 360, 360 male or 365? 360 around it. CM 365 for Rasikas only. CM 365 by 24 by 7 is for her, I think. Correct. <laughs> no, this is very true. So, uh, I have a couple very, very open ended questions. And these are, uh, you know, pardon my uh, uh, ignorance here. At the same time, I'm, I hope I'm reflecting some of the thoughts that uh, many of us Rasikas have. Uh, what are your views on these two topics? And these are very open-ended topics. You can take it in any direction you want. Music, Carnatic music as we know it, has been, uh, we've been, we've all been told it is a hand-me-down kind of a process, right? Uh, uh, only through a specific person have you been able to hand down this art and the greatness of the art and the valuable work that has been done in the past has been handed down. And through a guru, that's the right way to uh, learn and so on and so forth. Um, but at the same time, there is also uh, some structure that people have tried to infuse into this learning process. And, uh, you know, great musicologists have probably have a, had a hand uh, in that. Um, but but uh, truly, over the years, has it in has it in your view gotten better in terms of making it more available to current generations and future generations? Have we made a dent? Have we made a mark as a as a set of generations? Are we making it easier to pass it on uh, down? Or for anybody who is not from our culture, for example, how easy is it for them to imbibe Carnatic music and learn it, study it only as an external form, not even as a you know inherent part of the culture? There is a lot there, but I hope you can <laughs> talk there. <laughs> I think. I think it's like. Can you get it? Can you get it? Please, I'll give you a chance. Anyway, I understood what you're asking. Um, of course, uh, again, here we should uh, be thankful to the digital media in terms of yeah. disseminating music to so many people. In fact, this last four or five years, I would say, has been the best part, and the pandemic has been. Very, very good in terms of this aspect. Other aspects, of course, uh, uh, many things have not fallen in place for many people. But uh, uh -huh. this aspect of uh, spreading knowledge, because uh, of the, uh, I can, uh, I mean, again, this is all a matter of observation. I don't know how much you've observed where many of the top performers also never got to perform anywhere. Those two years were like they were sitting at home. So they were thinking how to, you know, really uh, keep themselves on. This is a because for every artist, the urge is to keep performing of people. Correct. The moment, in fact, I still remember uh, Bombay sisters uh, quoting long back that the moment or the day when I stop singing, I think I don't want to live anymore. So uh -huh. that kind of uh, every artist for that matter, I would say that uh, uh, some people may even criticize that the voice is failing and uh, why are they singing? You know, it's that inner desire always to keep singing, always to keep, you know talk about music is something any artist, any art you pursue for that matter, the aspiration is that till your last breath you should keep pursuing. So that way, uh, I would say that uh, the musicians also try various means to keep themselves going. And that way, uh, so many lecture demonstrations you would have seen that uh, people who are never into this foreign, all the practical musicians started talking about music. They started teaching music, which was a very welcome change. In fact, uh, the top stars, you would probably just get a glimpse in some auditorium somewhere. So, but then uh, through the master classes and then through all these uh, lecture demonstrations, you were able to have easy access to so much great knowledge, I would say. So that way, the digital media has done a lot of good in terms of uh, this aspect. You know, you would never have imagined uh, X or Y ever uh, coming in contact in terms of uh, learning from them. A Zoom lesson where you are able to interact directly with them. So that way we see that for a non-Indian uh, audience also you see that so much is available now on the net in the YouTube and other things. No, but but I, the point I was making there... Uh, now you not have to understand what is happening in the whole digital media. So much, every day, in fact, I hear Mark and keep that I should listen to this, I should listen to this. Correct. But yeah, that, is, that, is exactly, that is exactly where I was taking this question. The, the, the point being, there is a 
flurry of so much information and we are deluging ourselves with this information um wherein whereas in uh, all as uh, you know all technical areas let's say uh, technology engineering sciences wherever efforts are being put in cataloging this information to you know where we are trying to say this if you are a beginner start here you know and uh, this is somewhat more intermediate knowledge and here is advanced knowledge some librarianism aspects are being uh, followed but with uh, carnatic music i i'm still seeing the deluge it's like a person who is not very familiar does not know what to search for where to look where to begin and uh, while it's very true what you said is absolutely true two years three years uh, and uh, in the last 10 years as well digital media has opened up so much but at the same time are we truly helping the person who really needs that hand holding um of uh, you know learning and uh, getting uh, getting the right uh, information for where they are in their experience see uh, music is one subject where everybody can take the liberty to go about it that's the thing that's you fair. can sing you can sing in the bathroom you can sing in your hall you can right. sing in the stage you can sing anywhere so right. singing is again a natural urge of every human being that you have mm. understand mm. in fact uh, i for me again that observation you spoke about it was an eye opener where in the beginning stages of pandemic you would have seen that many people were posting uh, singing at home and just keeping on and on posting you know some of them were absolutely discordant to hear to my ears <laughs> for him my friends it was so. people who were around him in the facebook it was awesome beautiful excellent everything so i just made a mention that at least some quality has to be maintained uh, in terms of presenting when you are doing on social media so one person then asked me what is your problem i want to listen i am listening if you don't want to listen just don't listen this is what he told me so at that time it dawned to me that music is something which is uh, uh, what is called it is a property of everybody so that is how it is and yeah. but medicine i can't i can't become a doctor i uh, thought uh, so but music is something uh, which is born more out of an inner urge to see Sure. so you cannot stop anybody so somebody posts a 90 year old uh, lady singing you know you are astonished that at night she is singing but if you look and say ananda bhairavi in the gandhar on the tappa padina voice is not <laughs> cooperating at the tail but that the intention to sing that passion to sing is what to appreciate so that the music is very difficult to codify in that sense because everybody it's a, like you know free be open to everybody and anybody can uh, access it so you see the and uh, how we use it also has become now rampant in the Correct. sense that early it was only a kacheri format now you do free music fusion music uh, collaborative music uh, jugal bandi and uh, even the concert format has become totally non functional today because of the mm. social media yeah. where one song becomes a item yes. so <laughs> where where heading the whole concert structure itself doesn't make any sense now because we earlier we had 4 hours then 2 hours then 1 hour so now one composition and you are in the social media so whether one composition is full by itself or can you make a concert many things uh-huh. are uh, actually a questionable here so but and you see that one person who performs performs one uh, song for that matter probably he gets so many likes in the social media whereas the performer to our concert that day one lady was telling me ayyo rendu munnarla kekkona eppadi thalli 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 konja paapen so na thalli thalli paada mudiyadu but thalli see thalli padna appra sama inga vandru illa na <laughs> I mean, it was a heartbreaking in a way that so much of the effort is going, and then people, but people don't have the time today. That all this, so we are taxed that two hours, three hours, so can continue that. Can I move here? Three, the thing habit is slightly uh, uh, in a difficult position because our attention span has become very less today. In fact, the same three sixty five also. You all know the background. I was doing the program thirty minutes earlier. Uh, I knew that thirty minutes was not being listened to by anybody. So I, I cut down. To- I think <laughs> what you are doing is the right thing. Bite size. bite size uh, programming which is good see the pace at which things are moving right now uh, do you think that uh, people are going to be back to the halls to listen to even one and a half hour concerts mm. uh, that that's one worry even though i i talk to a lot of musicians they say you know uh, it, uh, nobody pays for anything when you go to the you have to just go and get at least they used to pay the higher body before <laughs> now <laughs> <laughs> you know that that became expensive so but still they pursue music with so much of passion and interest because they enjoy it and they think they can probably make others enjoy the music do you think uh, i mean i'm sure a lot of uh, people pursuing music for making money and they think if they become famous they they demand things but majority of them are just singing 
for who for themselves mm. do you, do you think so that that, that state will continue for uh, forever or uh, things will change if they how see there are some people who strongly believe that listening live only is the ultimate way so those kind of people probably start coming but now till now things are, things have not picked up here i'm sure because mm. we have only a handful of people coming in but then the digital media because uh, here mudra baskar has been experimenting for more than 10 years he has been always strongly feeling that that is the future yeah, yes so where you are able to reach a large audience now the feel of a live concert is totally different i I uh, fully agree with you sitting in an auditorium being immersed in that music in that ambience mm. is something very different here you are sitting with a mobile in your car you are just lying down and uh, listening to a concert you are eating and listening so how you are listening actually that uh, way you do is totally changed today <laughs> so <laughs> and a phone so, call comes you are engaged in phone call <laughs> or some, some tv series is running hey what's happening there <laughs> Yeah, see, very honestly, about 20 years back, you know, for me, going to a concert, whether it was a small artist or a big artist, was a big deal for me. From the morning, I used to reminisce about that, you know, I used to enjoy that thing that, okay, you know, that is so exciting, honestly, that I'm going to sit in the hall, that I'm going to listen to somebody. It may be even a small musician, very honestly, I'm really telling you, that kind of uh, feel that live concert used to give the thrill. Because there, you know, at that time, mobile phones were also not that much. Uh, sure. So there was no distraction. It was like you are engulfed by the music all the time. You know, whatever the uh, musician is singing, you are just lapping it all up and you are getting immersed in that. So today, things have uh, changed much and I really hope that live concerts come. But then, I suppose the digital media has now taken over in a very strong way. And and musicians also have come to accept that. In fact, uh, first, it was very difficult because... Uh, if you are sitting in a studio and singing, you are wondering whom am I singing to, mm. because you don't have anybody in front of you. And I also face. I did a lot of programs. In the Especially, there is no I direct know. appreciation from the artist, a nod for something that you do. Then you don't really feel motivated to. Yeah, but now we have tuned ourselves such that we imagine there are thousand people sitting in front of us and nodding their head <laughs> and appreciating, and that is how we motivate ourselves. That is the truth with every musician. Now. So uh, if you think there is nobody and uh, there is nothing happening, then you can't motivate yourself. So right. we have an imaginary audience in front of us, and we enjoy singing. That's how it uh -huh. works. The entire YouTube community is our audience. Our yeah. audience, correct. That is better audience, but you need a live audience. So imagine my imagine. live audience. Correct. That So and it's all the more difficult because I'm talking to somebody, so I have to motivate myself hundred times more, thinking <laughs> there are people listening to me. <laughs> so right, totally. Mind frame and thought process of the musician has also changed over the years. Sir, you know, sir, singing, yeah. uh, singing, standing in a mountain and singing, singing by the riverside. You see that, of course, now that that's another important thing. That the visual medium has become very much more important yeah. in the oral. and that is something very alarming i find that uh, it's not very good for our music because the moment you are seeing visual so much happening you immediately see the sari the jewelry the what is the kaadla pond the title matching airka sari gal match airka last time what we wore all kinds of things are working in your mind and once you give a beautiful landscape of a tree and uh, uh, himalayas and after that actually i then i realized oh did i listen to the song <laughs> your, your concentration is purposefully diluted diluted correct purposefully or uh, to give more entertainment but again the visual media has to be used you can't be sitting static at one position and to do that today i don't know how it works so i mean these are all great challenges i would say in terms of and musicians are also at crossroads now definitely because you are seeing only the front part but they are in a dilemma as to <laughs> how to present the music how to project the music it's a transition and it will take its own time to settle down as yeah. right so i have one more uh, sort of pedagogical question but it's all, also on many people's minds and it's been often and asked and uh, uh, repeated just wanted to get your views on this uh, sangeetam versus sahityam balance in the sense of um, how what what are your views is there is there uh, does it always have to be you know equanimously uh, balanced or uh, is there room for uh, um, you know over proportioning sahityam over sangeetam for example or otherwise other otherwise see it depends on the song some songs are sahitya oriented so at that that point of time i suppose we have to really as musicians also understand the import of the song what it wants to convey and uh, their bhasha gyanam is definitely important you may not be a big scholar 
but at least a basic understanding of what is the content of the song is very important. If you're singing a Petra song happily on stage, you know, laughing away, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, <laughs> so that, that uh, you know, the mood has to be understood. In fact, I have had such an experience once, very long back when I was small, you know, uh -huh. I was singing Paragoga Melara Ramaya and uh -huh. uh, enjoying that song on stage. I, was, I sang it in Andhra. I still remember. I was very, very small that time. Uh, mm -hmm. So then after the, the concert, that person asked me, did you know the meaning of the song that you're singing so happily? <laughs> so <laughs> then it was like, you know, hitting me on the head that after that, it was a revelation as to how much we have to understand what the Sahitya is all about when you are singing. Right. But then there are also many art, so art forms, you know, where like a Varnam, for example, you don't need to understand anything of the lyrics where the music is what is all about the understanding of it. or if you take a song like oranga sai that oranga sai is over one whole hour tanam. so where the kambodhi is what is flowing and you have to understand how the kambodhi flows so it all depends or if a song is packed with lyrics then i suppose you have to really understand but every song for that matter at least what the content is all about because everybody cannot be a uh, great musician uh, and be a scholar in Sanskrit, Telugu, Tamil, everything. Ella Katin Varnona, Adita Janman, put up. That is the truth. Uh, so, because we are all working, but still we know that we have not even taken a small drop from that mighty ocean called music. Every musician would say that. See, that much vast it is. Whether, you, I mean, spiritually you want to uh, look into it and att attain something from that and then sing, that is one aspect. Diksha the Rendal, like, to understand what is the whole background and mm. all and sing the song is a Herculean task. At mm. least based content as to what the song is all about, what he's trying to say, that is definitely important. And the others, even the uh, language, when <coughs> uh, it may be wrong pronunciation, wrong uh, utterance of words. So that much is definitely necessary for it. Perfect. A teacher also for that matter should teach this to the ch children. That is important that uh, whether they want or not, at least what is the content of the song they have to teach to Radhaji, I see that you are a member of uh, Board of Studies of Indian Music at Madras University, Hyderabad uh, University, and Anamali University. So, what is uh, what 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 is that you do as as part of being a member of these boards, and uh, how uh, is that going to change the academic uh, pursuit of music? As no, I was, I was with uh, Madras University, all over there, and only with Hyderabad University now. But uh, this, again, uh, we don't have any much role to play. We are just there. It's and a... uh, some expert uh, lectures and other things we do, that's all. Because, uh, see, you have to understand that the department is, again, under the um, under a larger umbrella of the university. So mm -hmm. they have their own ways of functioning. And uh, here it's very difficult because uh, they have to really adhere to so many things which they may not want to do. So and all the expert members are there, that's all. We don't have any big role to play. No, let me be very honest about it. Oh. Probably just a prestige to have some people on the board. That's all. But then we don't have any saying as such on the day-to-day um, -day happenings or on the development of the uh, department. That's how it works here. Oh. So I probably uh, last uh, in fact month I gave a few uh, expert lectures or sometimes we address PhD students and give them something from expert kind of. Uh, now we had the uh, facility of Zoom. So I used to address some uh, MA students or PhD students on a topic, interact with them. So that kind of things we do. But apart from that, really, we don't have any big say. That is true. Do you guide true. students? Hmm? Do you guide students? No, I have not taken to guide students. If somebody asks me for uh, any assistance regarding the research work and other things, I do. Because what happens sometimes, <coughs> the students uh, put the entire responsibility of writing on you. <laughs> Slowly, what happens, you become the student. So I don't want to get into Madam, the trap. You speak so well. And I think I'm sure you write well also. Please, <laughs> Please write. <laughs> delegating, you know the, delegating to your teacher. Uh, the passion of the subject traps you. So correct. Then, uh, then I can't say no, not for the student's sake, but the, I love the subject so much. Then I say, okay, let me try to do some more research and try to do something. So generally, I, I've been asked by many universities as well as... And we also have a problem here. I don't know if you know that you have to be a faculty somewhere if you have to be a guide. Uh, oh. You have to be working. Yeah, so. And I never opted for any work. I wanted to be independent all the time. So um, <laughs> so that opportunity has come. But anybody, uh, so many people come to me asking me for guidance as to what reference I can do or whom I can meet or what can you share with a particular subject. I am most open. I, In fact, I love doing that. If I don't know that subject, I even go to the extent of trying to find out or 
some books or whatever so I can try to help them. So that I, but I don't want to take the responsibility of doing the whole work. <laughs> so, Surada ji, this, this is a sort of my summary question for you. If you were to look at uh, yourself 29, 30 years ago, and you were to advise yourself, uh, the, the uh, you know, a, thir- a 30 year uh, younger version of yourself who has a bubbling um, enthusiasm of, uh, you know, for, for making a dent in musicology. And uh, what would you, what would you advise yourself? Would you, would you uh, infuse more enthusiasm into yourself at the, at that age? Or would you prevent yourself from doing any attempts at uh, musicology? Uh, Having a- all the 30 years of knowledge? Now that you have, you have uh, lived your life uh, this way, a certain way, um, how how would you influence your own younger self? I mean, it's not just for you alone, right? I'm asking for of another budding, for another uh, somebody who's really enthusiastic about musicology, wants to learn more, wants to do more. What would you advise for them? See, without a practical, strong foundation, I think the musicology doesn't work at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you want to have respect, that's the first thing. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, um, one thing is that uh, you can really probably plan many things, but everything doesn't work the way we want. That you have That's understand. true. That's so very practical. Even, even for a performer, let me share that. Um, in fact, I told in one of my episodes also about that, where you start off, you know, when you start learning and then you come to a stage, you imagine that you are one of the greatest performers and you have been globetrotting and uh, performing everywhere. But that doesn't happen for everybody. Okay. But that should not stop you from doing anything. So mm-hmm. if that path is not there, try to find another uh, sub path for yourself. So that is how probably I have been doing because everything that I really dreamt of never happened. That had to be because I also wanted to be a good performer, but it, that break doesn't come for everybody. Okay. In terms of becoming a star performer or somebody much sought after, it is much beyond even knowledge that you have to understand. In fact, many of my friends uh, who studied with me and who are my co artists, they feel vexed about the fact that I am also working so hard, I also have so much knowledge. In fact, some of them. To be honest, I have much more knowledge than some of the so very known musicians. Their mm. knowledge is absolutely, uh, you know, great. But it requires much more than all this to becoming a popular performer. You know, that is a different formula, a different cup of tea, I think. And uh, that's very difficult for me. For example, just uh, as on a personal note, I would like to say that I'm a very family-oriented person. Mm. I'm very glued to my family. So right. for me to travel three months, two months on a concert tour or something unimaginable because I imagine all kinds of things when I'm outside the house. That day I say, nobody is going to starve. <laughs> but I imagine all kinds of things, you know, that without me, the whole house will stop. Everybody's eating will stop. I know all kinds of funny things I imagine. So for me to be outside the house, even after probably two days is gone. And even for going out for two days, I make all the preparation at home so that the backup is perfect and nobody suffers at all. <laughs> so these are all priorities in life that we have to understand right. for each other. Some people may think, oh, let them take care of people. What is this? I'm earning my livelihood. I'm earning for the family. And I have friends also who say, well, I'm earning for the family. What's the big deal? Let them take care of themselves. But that's something I can't do. So hmm. it's again a very personal thing, I would say, Absolutely. as to how you take your life forward or what is the course of things. For me, the family is the first priority. Though music is my passion. That whatever uh, be my commitment outside the house, whether it's a concert, whether it's a lecture demonstration, uh, earlier it was uh, more tough because I used to go to the concert hall, come back home and prepare the dinner. But now at least I have the facility of switching off my laptop or iPad and then going to the kitchen to do a dinner or a lunch. So I am much more blessed and much more easy. But the point here is that my commitments and priorities are very different because I feel that Whatever I'm doing in terms of musicology or performance or teaching, it is for my own satisfaction. So I can't expect somebody in the family to sit and relish that on the table, isn't it? They need food to relish. They can't say, oh, I'm so full with your music today. I don't want lunch or dinner. Nobody is going to say that. So see, these are all matters. And for some people, you know, the music is their life. For them, other things don't matter at all. So for them, they're totally oblivious. In fact, some people can be totally oblivious to anything happening around them also. They say, uh, uh, oh, we are, they will ask you sometimes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that, their memory is that. I, I don't know if it's a, it's a natural disposition or a convenience. <laughs> you may take it, whatever. No, but then, of course, that much of commitment is required also if you want to become great in music. I fully appreciate that. Because you have to be only in that world. 
Correct. Only then, probably I'm uh, I'm at a very fundamental level because of the fact that I'm uh, diverting my uh, energy into various uh, areas. But the person who you know, only, Radhaji, you know what I'm observing is more than anything, you enjoy what you are doing. Absolutely, you are doing multiple things and you are enjoying. If you are kind of consumed in one thing and that is going to deny that enjoyment, probably that is not worth it for you. Correct. Correct. So. Oh, nothing. One going back to the kitchen is an enjoyment for me. Yes. And every day, you believe me, I'll give marks to my cooking. I will say today out of hundred, I have got seventy. Today out of I will tell to myself today you have not done well. You only okay. get sixty. You know what? During my Madras trip, I'm going to come to your place and uh, find it out myself. Your your culinary skills. You are most welcome. I still remember Nehru Nuri Garu coming to my house and uh, tasting my rasam and saying, "This is the original Tanjore rasam." I remember uh, that. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic, Radhaji. We have come to the end of the program almost. I mean, uh, we are just a little over than that. Uh, we we were just absolutely flabbergasted with your uh, your pour of uh, talk and you know basically the ideas, the things that you shared with us. Uh, we didn't really interrupt you a lot for only one reason because otherwise you would have you have you have uh, looking at your resume you would have drilled down quite a few things. Yes. Uh, since you did not want to do the second program because of your other commitments, uh, we had to let you speak more, and we really, 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 really enjoyed. I'm sure our audience would also would also have enjoyed. And uh, typically, we finish the program with some rapid fire session uh, by Harry. <laughs> oh. Actually, I'm out of all the rapid fire stuff before. <laughs> but you uh, love the fire. <laughs> no, no, no. I can ask you one question, Radhaji. Actually. This is a what if question. Um, so, if you anywhere in the world, if you if you wanted to pick and uh, uh, move to or relive your life, just as an imaginary question, where would that be? Nowhere. I want to be with Mr. Mudra Baskar all the time. <laughs> wherever he is, wherever he is, Amma. Our Greece point are not No problem. No problem. Okay, very good. And and one last question: your your favorite vacation spot. Nothing like that, actually. I, I don't travel much at all. So there's nothing like that. Where if we, Wherever we go, I learn to enjoy this place. That's all. Fantastic. Uh, we have been visiting quite a place like Singapore and other things. Wherever we've been, we just love the place. That's all. You know, just, anything outside the house, I think, is fine now in the pandemic situation. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You know what? We had a very, very enjoyable conversation with uh, Absolutely. Uh, Baskar uh, last year. Um, and, uh, today, we have been doubly joined with your uh, being here and having this conversation with us. And definitely we are going to have you back here at some point in time. I'm sure that you would accept without saying no. Uh, <laughs> please. Okay. It's always a pleasure talking to both of you. So there is, there is, there is so much to share and, you know, probably we can go at a relaxed pace, mm. take a few things and go only uh, talking about those things. And uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, but anyway, it's a customary thing to say. Thank you so thank much. You. And you. we had a wonderful conversation. Thank you. Thank you. So until we see you next time in Carnatic, uh, uh, what is that? Casual conversation with Carnatic <laughs> Arts, uh, episode uh, seven. Uh, we bid you goodbye tonight. Uh, I think the Sunday is over here. Monday has begun there. You all <laughs> go about your work and uh, Guys here, go to sleep. <laughs> Have a wonderful dinner before that. And see you guys next week. Thank you so much, Radhaji. And the live stream off, Panila, man. Yes, yes, yes.